Ramadan is gone, as I said. You don't need to talk about Ramadan now. I want to remind myself and yours what we should be now that Ramadan has gone. You know, the, the NBC News Channel uh, are here taking some news and pictures around. And that was one of the questions she asked. What now after Ramadan? What do we expect from the people after Ramadan? We expect to be better believers. We expect to be people of stronger faith and iman. We expect to be people of better amal and good deeds in the part of Allah. That is what is expected from us now. Now that Ramadan is gone, don't get back to be a beast. You know, I, I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in Juma Khutbah that when you look at wrestling and you look at boxing and you look at kickboxing, there's a famous term that some of these real hardcore fighters use. They say they're going to unleash the beast inside of me. Have you heard that statement? Oh yeah, check the, the arena, you'll see. Say that, not tonight I'm going to unleash the beast from inside of me, meaning I will beat that guy down. The animalistic qualities will come out for me. Now what happens, Ramadan tied down that beast for many of us. Don't let loose that beast now that Ramadan has done, gone by. Don't let that beast come out from us and go home and start shouting and talk to people bad and talk to people rough and say, Hey, Ramadan is done. I need to give you a piece of my mind today. <laughs> Don't do that. And people you had, you wanted to tell them back, you wanted to say, No, don't do that, my brothers and sisters. Don't spoil your Ramadan. Don't spoil all the blessings that you have earned in Ramadan. Don't do that. Don't let that beast come out. You tied him for 29, 30 days. Keep him tied. And remain to be a good believer, good mu'min. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expected from us in this month of Ramadan. To attain the quality of piety. And there is something else I want to share with myself and you. A lot of times, in the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and it's a reminder, and this is a problem that a lot of people have. A lot of times, we are unjust. We are unjust to people. And I want to share this verse in the Quran. And this is what I want to remind myself and you of today, in today's khutbah. Now that the Ramadan has gone, it's not about only eating food, it's about being that good believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, verse 8. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about taqwa. You know we fasted? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Attain piety. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about being just. You know a lot of us, we're unfair to people because they're not Bengali like me. They're not Pakistani like me. They're not Trinidadian they're not Caribbean like me. Or they're not American like me. You know, we think like that. Or no, 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 no. That is un-Islamic. Haram! Or they're not rich like me, so I live in an enclosed, sophisticated community. I don't mean all of you who live in... Like, brother, I mean doesn't live in a closed community, but he live in a... Richer house than people who live in close communities. So it doesn't only mean that. Eh? Oh, they are not my class. They live in a poor class, a poor house. That is so haram. To think like that, to speak like that, it is so haram. It is far away from taqwa. And you do not be unjust to people because of their class. You know, in some countries, you've got a lot of class. I don't care what class they are in. We are all human beings. We are all the children of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. We are all the servants of Allah. Don't look, the person who looks at people and judge people by class C-L-A-S-S, -S, they need to take off the C-L and that's what they are. That's an English word, eh? But I wouldn't pronounce it on a member. Those people who look at people and categorize people by class and think that I am better than that person, then you take off the CL and that's what you are. The attitude of a gadaha, the attitude of a donkey, the prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you speak harsh and loud to people, that's the voice of a donkey. And when people think low of other people, that's the action of a donkey. 
All right. Don't spoil your Ramadan, please. That's why I want to remind myself and you, don't just go home and eat roti and biryani and have a wonderful day and get back to the shaitan. No. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse. Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 8. And I'm sorry to sound so harsh. I know it's a happy day. It's a joyous day. But I want to remind myself and you so our entire life will be joyous. Our Jannah will go to Jannah if we do the right things to keep the blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawameen lillahi shuhada'a bil qist. Do you know what Allah is saying here? <laughs> Subhanallah. Allah is saying, O oh, ye who believe, be firm, firm, firm. Be firm. Be witnesses of justice. This verse is all about justice. Being just. That's a problem people have. And I don't say only Muslims. Every human being nowadays, generally, we are very unfair. We are unfair. The neighbor child... Our child slapped the neighbor child. We give the neighbor child wrong. Why did he come in my, house, in my house? See how unfair we are? But if our child goes in the neighbor's house and the neighbor's child slap our child, we'll say, why did the neighbor child slap my child? We're unfair. We're unjust to others. And we do that with people of nationality, class, high, standard, low, rich that we judge. A very sad disease in the hearts of people. You listen to people and you will see. And Allah is saying you must always witness. So when you go around and people are unfair in what they say and what they do, stay away from that. Stay away from it. Or be witness to justice. Then Allah continues in this verse. Subhanallah. Wallah yajri mannakum shana'anu qawmin ala Allah ta'adilu. This is the... The PowerPoint in this verse. Allah says, and if you hate someone, don't let your hatred make you be unjust to them. Do you see that happening? Brother Farid, it happens all the time. You just don't like half his money, so you don't like his car, you don't like his house, you don't like his business. Everything about him, you're unfair. You don't like somebody, they ask you a favor, because you don't like them, you don't give them. Allah says, don't be unjust to people because you don't like them. Listen, my brothers and sisters. You go home and study this verse. Chapter 5, verse 8. If you hate someone and you dislike someone, do not be, be unfair and unjust to them. That is haram. A lot of families do that. You check out a lot of daughters-in-law. They don't like the mother-in-law. Oh, boy. Everything about that poor mother-in-law is bad. She could be as beautiful as a queen. She's ugly in the eyes of that daughter-in-law. A mother-in-law does not like a daughter-in-law. That daughter-in-law can be the most intelligent, the prettiest, the most pious. That mother-in-law will hate everything about her. Hate her, hate her family, hate the village she comes from. Isn't that true, Brother Farouk? Doesn't that happen all over the world? And hear what Allah is saying. Not because you hate someone, don't use your hatred to be unjust. Brothers and sisters, all your fasting Ramadan will go down the drain. All this night of praying tarawih, the blessings will go to those people because it's a form of oppression and persecution to someone when we are unjust to them because we don't like them. And oh, if it's someone you like, now you're even more unjust, unjust by being unfair in giving to them. <laughs> so we're unfair on both ways. So hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allahu Akbar. Eh dulu, eh dilu, huwa akhrabu taqwa Hear the verse. In Ramadan, you fasted la'allakum tattaqoon, to attain piety. Isn't it so? Tafsir, yeah? Allah is saying, when you're just with people, that's nearness to taqwa. When you're just, you're fair, you're good with people, that is huwa aqrabu taqwa That is close to being pious. That is a line of piety. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wattaqullah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Do your duty to Allah. For indeed, Allah knows everything we do. 
You know, you, you, you live in, a, uh, you live in your, your office by yourself. You live around. Nobody knows who you are, what you look like. But Allah knows what we do. Allah knows if we're unfair to people. Allah knows which relatives we are unjust to, which children we are unjust to, which brothers and sisters we are unjust to, which community member, co-worker, classmate, roommate that we are unfair to. You're going in an airplane. You're flying with passengers. Be fair to other people. Be fair. Don't cut the lines. Don't be biased. Don't be unfair to people. Don't do that. All your blessings will go down the drain because it's a form of persecution to people in the name that I have outsmarted him. Oh, you know a lot of Muslim businessmen? Well, not Muslim, all men. They think when they rob this person, That's a sign that I'm smart. That's a sign that you're a crook. That's not a sign that you're smart. A lot of people, oh, I outsmart him. I outsmart him. He was supposed to sell the car for 10000 I've made him pay, make it happen that I only paid him 7000 You robbed the poor guy. That's not being smart. That's being unfair. That's not being a kalmand. You think that you're smart. That's being stupid. Because on the day of judgment, we'll have to pay for that. On the day of qiyamah, we'll have to pay for that. So that's not being smart. The Prophet says, smart is the person who lives for the hereafter. Bilqoof, a fool is one who lives for this world. So you think you outsmart everybody. So come in, if someone came to your business place, five pounds of flour, you gave them four and a half pounds and made them pay for ten pounds. That's my brain. That's your stupidity. Because you don't realize you will have to pay more penalty in the hereafter. So now that Ramadan has gone, my brothers and sisters, preserve the blessings. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. We'll just continue for a few minutes in the second khutbah, inshallah. I just wanted to remind myself and you, you know what, before we go in the second, in the, in the second khutbah and conclude, let me attach another verse to this khutbah. And then we'll conclude in the second khutbah, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in... Another surah, Hujurat. Surah Hujurat. And I want to remind myself and you, and again, all our viewers throughout the world. We have people who view Eid Mubarak to all our people. Assalamu alaikum all over the world. MashaAllah, we do have a lot of supporters, a lot of people, you know, from a little humor point of view. You know, in Ramadan, everybody was bringing all kind of sweets for me, coconut, fish, peanut drink, mangoes. I want to let you know that Ramadan is done, so I'm not fasting anymore. You know, when I was fasting, I was getting so many things because I can't eat it. So Ramadan is done, right? So that means what, Brother Tassi? Continue bringing it, inshallah. Because now we could eat all day, inshallah. But anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, and may Allah bless all those generous brothers and sisters, you know, Brother I mean, I pitched up in front of a fish man with a van load full of fish. I came to buy a few pounds, Brother I mean, said, you don't pay when I'm here. I said, What? So I need to walk around, brother. I mean, all the time, inshallah. You know, big Mercedes Benz, many cars. So I'll be driving his cars. When you see me driving Mercedes, it's my brother. I mean, they're not mine. Inshallah, that's barakah. Allah subhanahu wa taala in Surah Hujurat. Hear what He says. And this again is a problem. I see it happening in Masjid. You know, my brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, I travel all over the world: Africa, India, Hong Kong. You name it, all over the world. And I've seen Muslims all over the world. I've seen. People all over the world. It's 47 years of dawah. 45, 46, 47 of dawah. One of the major problems that people have, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse reminds us so we don't fall prey to that. Hear what Allah says in Surah Hujurah, chapter 49, verse 13. Chapter 49, verse 13. And some of you, you've got businesses, you're doctors, you're engineers, you're lawyers, you're professionals. Apply this in your daily life. Apply it in your daily life. Let us apply it in our daily life. So we continue to keep our blessings, save our blessings that we have earned in Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalakna kum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alna kum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. You know what Allah is saying here? <laughs> you know, this is a very mixed audience. 
You always hear that. We got Arabs here, Egyptians here, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, people from somewhere and people from nowhere too here. I mean Norway. All over the world. Huh? That's the sign of this ummah. Inna hadhihi ummatukum ummatun wahida wa na rabbukum fa'abudun. Allah said this is one ummah. We are one people, one nation under the command of Allah. But a lot of times because we look different, we talk different, we are from a different nationality, or we are from a different country, we treat people with scorn. We treat people with scorn. We treat people lesser because they are not from our class and our nationality. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah says, Ya Yohannas, O oh human beings, certainly Allah has created you as males and as females. I mean, nowadays we've got to be careful what we are too. So I'm going to stick to that. When you fill out the American registration forms, you fill whatever gender you belong to. The Quran says, yeah, males and females. Yeah? Allah says, I created you like that. Shu'uban wa qaba'ila. In different tribes, different nations. Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, Arabs, Caribbean, uh, South American, Hispanic, you name it. Allah says, I'm the one who have created you in different languages, different colors, different nations, different tribes. But hear what he says. Lita arafu. So that you will learn to understand people and be better with other people. Not shun people. Not despise people. Not treat people in a lower class. And say, he doesn't belong to our type of people. What is that? Some women, based on how they dress, on the jewelry and the expensive dresses, they click together like that. See another sister in an ordinary dress? That is so honest. That is haram. You don't, you don't do that to people because they look different, they talk different, they dress different. Allah says what we need to do, lita arafu. Try to understand other people. Try to learn their lifestyle, their culture, who they are, what they do, so that you will better understand them and have a better relationship with them. And hear what Allah says when He continues. This is such a powerful verse, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, warns us and says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqam. Those of you who are best in your actions and your deeds with other people, that's a sign of taqwa and piety. So you know what? In Ramadan, la'allakum tattaqun. So I'm connecting everything to Ramadan. We fasted so that we would attain taqwa and piety. And Allah is saying, when you treat people with honor, with respect, with integrity, with dignity, that's a sign of taqwa. Can you imagine that? That inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. Those are the people who will be most honored, who treat people with respect and honor. Don't spoil your Ramadan. Please, please, that's my message to myself and you today.